All right, welcome back to the Free Press Live. As promised, at the top, a very special guest for us. <laughs> very special, the Duce herself, the Free Press editor in chief, Barry Weiss. I made, I made Nelly call me that. Yes. Um, yeah, we got her in the newsroom because she had a scoop yesterday. Uh, the article is titled How CBS is Marking October 7th by Admonishing Tony DeCoupel. Um, and if you missed the interview that uh, Tony DeCoupel did on CBS, and this is just him doing what journalists do, doing his job and asking what we here at the Free Press think are pretty obvious questions of Ta-Nehisi Coates about his anti-Israel book. Why does ta Coates, who I've known for a long time, read his work for a long time, very talented, smart guy, leave out so much? Mm. Why leave out that Israel is surrounded by countries that want to eliminate it? Why leave out that Israel deals with terror groups that want to eliminate it? Mm. Why not detail anything of the first and the second intifada, the cafe bombings, the bus bombings, mm. the little kids blown to bits? And is it because you just don't believe that Israel, in any condition, has a right to exist? All right, the free press obtained some leak, leaked audio of a CBS editorial meeting in which DeCoupel was trashed by his bosses in front of his colleagues for asking questions, his job. Let's take a listen. And there are times we fail our audiences and we fail each other. We're in one of those times right now. And it's been growing. And now we, uh, we are at a tipping point. Many of you have reached out to express concerns over recent reporting, specifically about the CBS Morning's Coates interview from last week as well as comments made coming out of some of our correspondents reporting. I want to thank every single one who reached out for your honesty, your transparency, and your commitment. So I want to address three things. Number one, after a review of our coverage, including the interview, it's clear there are times we have not met our editorial standards. Number two, this has been addressed and it will continue to be in the future. And number three, I, I want to acknowledge and I want to say, I want to apologize that it's taken this long to have this conversation. We're taking so long to have this conversation, so we decided to have it on October 7th, correct? Oh, yeah, exactly. That's, uh, that's the cherry on top here. <laughs> Barry, um, you know, I watched this interview when it happened and I was pleasantly surprised that there was some good, you know, push and pull from Tony. Um, how does this fail editorial standards? I mean, you listen to these calls. What is the actual complaint here? Because this is from what I know of this job that we do, what we're supposed to do. Yeah, no, the actual complaint is that Tony DeCoppel committed the sin of doing real journalism mm -hmm. on morning TV. And of course, the reason that this is a sin in this case is because of the subject, yeah. um, which is Israel, um, and a, a book that ta Coates, in his extensive press tour, has bragged about how, he has said that the idea that the conflict between the Israelis and the Arabs <laughs> yes. is, is not only not complicated, yeah. but the idea that it's complicated is, quote, horseshit. Yeah. He, he does not mention, and I really recommend that everyone goes and reads Coleman Hughes's extensive mm -hmm. review of this book in our pages, he does not mention, I, I mean, I have it here, Let me, let's just see, because I wanna make sure I'm getting it right. Um, he doesn't mention terrorism, Hamas, Hezbollah, yeah. October 7th. I mean, it's like writing a book about the Civil War without mentioning slavery. I mean, it's there's so much missing information, it's more like a lie. And, and so- Yeah, Tony, and that, so, yeah, that pointed question, by the way, on this, because he writes mostly about the West Bank, and that's the only place he visited, says, what about the second intifada mm -hmm. you don't mention? And if you don't mention that, you don't understand what's happening in the, in the West Bank today. Right, it's like- It's a fair question, Do right? you want to understand why there are checkpoints? Yeah. You cannot understand that without going back to a history where people in Sabaro's pizzerias and cafes and buses and schools were blown up. Mm -hmm. So to not mention that would raise some questions. And the thing is, at CBS, when they have, I don't know, a Republican on, 
when they have someone who you know is a vociferous advocate for the Second Amendment on, when they have any number of people on, you would expect CBS to do its job would challenge that person. Yes. So why in this case was it unacceptable? Why in this case did it lead not only to that call, you heard some of the audio from it, but today to a DEI session uh, with you know some DEI guy called Donald Grant. You should go look up his Instagram. Oh, There's some really colorful, really, amazing really things on something it. Else. As yeah. if that's the solution. Yeah. And uh, we, we should note that um, CBS's chief legal correspondent, a woman called Jan Crawford. What a hero. Balls of steel. What a hero, Jan Crawford. Balls of steel in that call yeah. where she's like, wait a minute, hold on. Yeah. I don't understand. Yeah. I watched that interview and thought, this is exactly sure. what we're meant to do as journalists. Correct. This is the entire thing. Yeah. Our job is to challenge people yeah. that have self-described one-sided positions in ta Coates' yeah. case on the topic to make sure that we're giving the full picture to our audience. If he's getting in trouble for doing that, she basically asks, I don't know how to do my job. Mm -hmm. And am I going to get in trouble for doing the thing that I thought we mm -hmm. were all here to do in the mm -hmm. first place? And then they basically don't answer the question, and the top brass at CBS says, let's go yeah. into our office and we'll talk to you separately. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. When I first saw that clip with ta Coats, Coates, I was so thrilled because I've been trying to make this argument that anti-Zionism is just wokeness Middle East edition forever. You take you know, the distinction that Western civilization is built on, that there's a distinction between right versus wrong, and you throw that away and replace it with the distinction between powerful versus powerless, and then you superimpose skin color onto that, and boom, whoever has less power is the victim and is always inherently virtuous, including during the second intifada when they're blowing up children, and whoever has allegedly more power is therefore inherently evil and therefore is always, always at fault and has all the agency, and the side with less power has no moral responsibilities, right? And then, so I'm trying to make this argument since October 7th, and then the patron saint of wokeness himself, Ta-Nehisi Coates, shows up and literally makes it for us, right? He said, he literally says ex what I just said, but, you know, saying, not as a critique, yeah. but this is the worldview. I thought it was such a great and telling clip, and it's so amazing to me because um, the clip did what you're not allowed to do, which is to expose the wokeness for the amoral, empty, empty worldview that it is and what you I, I mean such a kudos Barry for getting this scoop because what you hear in that scoop though in the clip we just played is the obeisance to the temper tantrum right from the top brass but as if it is courage right she had this I want to thank of, you all for exactly like, <laughs> that was my favorite you're bit. so brave you and rats. i'm so brave for <laughs> listening to you when yeah. it is the the height of cowardice right is just caving to this but here's what i want to ask you barry to me this is not it doesn't feel like 2020 anymore it doesn't feel like the winds are in the sails of the cowards it seems to me and maybe this is just my bubble that this piece that you guys ran, the expose of this horrifying, horrifying punishment for the crime of journalism, um, is being met with a lot of anger at CBS for how it's handling this, that we have sort of turned the tide, we're in the woke lash, people don't want to see this kind of thing. What do you think? Do you think that's true? It's interesting. I, you know, I, it's hard for me to tell, mm -hmm. because on, on, in a certain sense, like, the pattern recognition that I have around yeah. a story like this is yeah. like, this is the same yeah. story over yeah. again. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, some people, um, maybe in a Slack channel, I've heard, heard different things from different people at CBS, got mad about the interview, they wrote some letters, they, you know, hung the charge of, you know, the, 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 the charge of the accusation of racism over the heads of CBS top brass, and lo and behold, you have that call yesterday. I have to ask, do, do you have an emotional like trauma response? No, because this exact no. thing happened to you. Yeah, but at this point, it's like uh -huh. it's like we, we know how it goes. It's Did like, you feel like you're going to start another company? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, this again. Uh, well, I have to say, every moment like this is a recruiting opportunity. Yes, for exactly. Time. That was my first thought. Tony, are, Tony, are you listening? I hope you're watching. Yes. Um, well, it made me, you know. It, 
I don't have, I, I, I'm i so far beyond it at uh-huh. this point that I don't have a trauma response. I just oh have a feeling of like, oh God, like, <laughs> like kind of like, here we go again. But, like but we know exactly that, how the story goes. But isn't goes. that kind of the punishment? They can't get away with firing or sanctioning right. someone for asking questions. That's, I think that's too far. I think they would know. But they could they, have been 2020. They could have been 2020. They placate them. And it's, it's very 2020 in the sense that like, you ask a couple of hard questions and then somebody gets... Two hundred thousand dollars to come in and do a DEA <laughs> training session. It literally makes no sense. But if you know these things in the past, you've been through this. The point is to create the atmosphere in now which you everyone. don't ask those questions again, and your colleagues kind of hate you. I mean, we work in a business in which you know at Hachette, when Woody Allen's book was going to come out, never been convicted of a crime, people walked out lest they publish a book. And as I pointed out at the time. Hachette on, had on its list a book by a mass murderer who killed for the mob. That was fine, right? In this kind of instinct now that like we can't be around people who have these, you know, dissenting views. Particularly on CBS, that's kind of like the closest we get to a national broadcast. But th- that is what's so powerful about what this legal correspondent, yeah. Jen yeah. Crawford, said on the call. This is what she said. It sounds like we're calling out one of our anchors in a somewhat public setting for failing to meet editorial standards for... I'm not even sure what. Yes. I thought our commitment was to the truth. And when someone comes on air with a one-sided account of a very complex situation, mm-hmm. as Coates himself acknowledges that he has, I thought we were obligated to challenge that worldview. Mm-hmm. He prevented a one-sided account from being broadcast on our network that was completely devoid of history or facts. And as someone, she says, who does a lot of interviews, I'm not sure how to proceed mm-hmm. in, an, in an interview. What a hero. Ch- yeah. but, but it's like, so... We know now, yeah. like the, the, what this call, and the, the recording that you heard, and what the response to CBS will convey to anyone who does not have a high-profile, yeah. bold-faced name. Of course, yeah. right? Think about the 25-year-old that works there, 26-year-old that works there, the person that wants to become one of the anchors. Mm-hmm. What message does it send to them? Mm-hmm. What kind of chilling atmosphere does it create? I think it's also worth pointing out one more thing. And that is the unbelievable double standard at CBS and at so many other places. Go back to 2020. Think about the kinds of things that were said by Tony's co-host on the show, Mm -hmm. by Gail King. She said, and I want to quote this, this is what she said on May 26, 2020, of course, in the aftermath of the killing of George Floyd. I'm speechless. I'm really, really speechless, and she was fighting back tears about what we're seeing on television. It feels to me like open season, like there's no safe place in this country for black men. And she was saying that, holding back tears. We accept and, in fact, celebrate when the right kind of people with the right kind of identities bring their lived experience to bear on journalism. In that case, it's celebrated, it's embraced, it's held up as a moment of vulnerability and honesty and authenticity, and it should be. Which also Tony didn't do. But it's right. 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 I point out, it was right. not a personal thing for him. Though, and I want to ask you this question, this is something that I had a conversation with a mutual friend of we ours We just about. should point out that he has Jewish children Correct. who live in Israel. Yeah, so he has... But he does not even, you're right, he doesn't even bring that to bear in no. the conversation, yes. and yet it's as if he's being punished for yeah. that association. Well, that Michael. was said. There's two, he has two uh, Jewish children from his first wife, and they all live in Israel. I don't even believe that Tony's Jewish, but they live in Israel. He converted, actually. And, oh, oh, good for him. I'm in the process of that, I think, <laughs> by are. being on the show. By assimilation. This is, my, this is assimilation. This is my conversion, this show. <laughs> but um, there was a number of people on Twitter who said that this, and this absolutely stunned me, and I couldn't get anyone to be as stunned that, as, as I was, that this should have been explained at the top of the show. That this is a conflict of inf- interest. Having people living in a democratic country is a conflict of interest. Imagine if I had to say that about you know, a story in Sweden, is that my ex-wife is Swedish and my daughter has a Swedish passport. So just so you know, I might be very pro-Swedish on this story. No, it's for only one place in one people. And I couldn't believe that no one, you know, copped onto this, this argument on, on, on Twitter that you should ex- say, oh, well, well, I have a vested interest. Well, yes, I mean, we all should have a vested interest in kids not being killed. 